let's just imagine for a second that we're back in our childhood. You know, for me, that pretty much consisted. Let's do this again, shall we? About 10 months ago, I made this video, and it's not my best work. However, I enjoyed it for what it is, and it being my first true video on this channel, I liked it, and I still do. However, since then, I've gotten better at editing, reread Reborn, and rewatched its anime, and figured I'd do a much better video now with everything that I've learned since then. So ladies and gentlemen, homies, welcome to another Katayo Hitman Reborn video. This time, let's do it properly, shall we? I hope you all enjoy it. Kataio Hitman Reborn, also known as just Reborn, is an anime and manga created by Akira Amino. The title roughly translates to Home Tutor Hitman Reborn, which is in reference to the character who is the symbol of the entire series as well as the one who starts our adventure off. The story of Hitman Reborn is pretty simple. Our MC, Suna, sucks at everything. Academics, sports, social interaction, the guy just can't catch a break. That is, until one day when he meets his new home tutor, the infamous hitman known as Reborn, who was sent by the most powerful mafia family known as the Vongola to train Suna to become its 10th boss. Easy to understand and pretty easy to follow, however, before we move on to talking about its characters, we have to discuss the biggest issue many have with Reborn, that being its opening arc. The opening arc of Reborn is a big point of contention. What consists of 19 episodes in the anime and 61 chapters in the manga, which roughly translates to about 8 volumes, it is one of the biggest turnoffs to people finding out about the series for the first time. The reason people aren't fond of this opening section is because, well, it's very slice of life. This is due to the series pretty much starting out as a gag manga before shifting to a full-on battle shonen later. And I'll be the first to admit that this part is the roughest to get through. Each time I talk about Reborn, people always ask me when it gets good and wonder why I post screenshots like this, but all they're reading or watching is stuff like this. I understand, however, let me offer some food for thought when it comes to this entire arc. Consider that these opening moments are to establish the characters, the setting, and overall relationships between everyone. Then you can kind of understand why it's there in the first place. This isn't to say that that makes it any better, but I think it keeps you somewhat interested knowing that after this, it's all just action and story. By the time you get to the first major arc of the series, there isn't really much time to continue this sort of gag manga-esque nature that the first arc has. While there's bits and pieces of that, each arc after just starts to continue the story of the mafia and really never goes back to this again. If you want my opinion though, you can watch the anime's first 19 episodes and continue reading off at chapter 62 for the next and first major arc of the series. Or you could just keep watching the anime as the anime actually goes faster than the manga in the beginning since it actually cuts out certain bits and pieces of those 61 chapters to kind of streamline the experience a little bit more. I only say this if the manga is really boring for you, but I digress. Still, this arc is important, and without it, we wouldn't understand how the characters are and how they actually feel about everything moving forward. Which reminds me, we should probably go ahead and talk about those types of people, shouldn't we? <laughs> there was anything that this series was strong with, it was characters. Each of them feel unique and have a purpose in the plot. Now there's a lot of characters to discuss, and I mean a lot. But for now, I'll only discuss the main ones that make up the guardians of the Vongola family. Starting with Hayato Gokudera, a loudmouth and short-tempered teenager who at first views Suna to not be worthy of becoming the 10th boss of the Vongola, especially compared to someone like him who has actually dealt with the Mafia before. However, after a quick match against Suna, he quickly changes and decides to become Suna's right-hand man from that point on. Gokudera is the bodyguard to Suna, but his role is much than that. 
What makes him special is, while he only really respects Suna Reborn and his older sister, he still always goes to make sure the rest of the team is safe and sound, making him the best pick as the right hand man of not just Suna, but a protector for the entire family. The next guardian, Takeshi Yamamoto, is a chill guy who just loves to play baseball. He's pretty simple to understand, but what makes him special in this group is the relationship with everyone. For a person so chill, his love for his friends is what keeps him going most of the time, and what drives him to become the great guardian that he does turn into. At first, he finds a lot of this mafia stuff to be a big game that Suna and the rest are playing, but he quickly understands the nature of the situation, and while he is always cool and collected, he never strays from his path and always flows along it. Another guardian, Ryohei Sasagawa, is just as chill as Yamamoto, however he can get fired up real quick. You can consider him the hype man for the team, but he is much more than just that. As the captain of the boxing club, he is very act first, think later type of person, always rushing to do things head on in order to improve his fighting skills. While he might seem like a muscle head at first, his compassion for his teammates and family make him one of the most kind members of the Guardians and plays a major role as a support type for the group. After meeting Suna and boxing with him, he decides to follow Suna on his journey and continues to prove himself to be a worthy part of the family. Arguably the most popular of the Guardians, Kiyoya Hibari seems to not really care about any of the Mafia stuff happening. He is the head of the disciplinary committee of the middle school our characters go to and is always ready to test out his fighting capabilities when he has the chance. However, he isn't a meathead like Ryohei. Hibari is much more collected and tries to strategize when possible. He is one of the smartest people on the team and while he always has this cool guy attitude with him and stone cold demeanor, he does care for all the students at the school and actively participates in the mafia battles of the show even if he says it's only to find stronger opponents. Probably the most disliked guardian out of all of them, Lambo is a small child who was a hitman for the Bovino family originally sent to kill Reborn. Of course, his plan fails and soon becomes the lightning guardian for the Vongola. His childlike nature causes many in the show and outside of it to see him as nothing more than an annoyance, but I beg to differ. Lambo symbolizes the idea of protecting the young so they can grow up to do the same. While yes, many of the family look after him and his part in fights isn't really much compared to the others, it's a testament to how connected this mafia family is that they are willing to risk their lives just to save one of their own. Don't get it twisted though, Lambo is able to fight when needed thanks to his 10 year bazooka which replaces the current Lambo with his future self. While reckless in nature, he does care for everyone around him and even looks up to Suna as a sort of big brother type for him. And the last guardian, Mukuro Rukudo and Kurome Dokuro as the Miss Guardians respectively. Mukuro at first wanted to destroy the Mafia due to his past and fought against Suna and his friends, however, after seeing Suna's resolve and noticing how different he was from the other Mafia people, he decided to not target him for now and even help out on occasion. Like Hibari, he mainly does things for his own goals and doesn't really care for the Mafia stuff unless it means he can fight someone strong. That's where his counterpart, Chrome, comes in. Chrome has a special link with Mukuro and allows for him to show up in battle even if his body is somewhere else. This doesn't mean Chrome isn't her own character though, as she fights alongside Suna and the rest for the simple fact that she trusts Suna and cares for him after Suna showed compassion for Chrome. Both of them are illusionists and both are very powerful assets to the team overall. The final two characters I'd like to discuss are the two main ones that really make up the entire series, that being Reborn and Suna. Starting with Reborn, he is the character most tend to be fond of. The thing that makes Reborn so amazing to watch is his trust in the cast and Suna, as well as his absolute commitment to the Vongola family overall. He's the one who chose the Guardians for Suna and has his own reasonings for his picks. He also trains Suna the most and always makes sure that each fight he gets into is a lesson to be learned. He's a great teacher to Suna, but also a great friend. By the end of the series, you don't just get this student-teacher relationship, but a true best friendship between the two after everything they have gone through, and honestly, it's genuinely beautiful to see. 
Now for the one I've been saving for last, one of, if not my favorite character in all of fiction. Suna is a character that many will write off as a wimp at first. They find his scaredy cat nature to be annoying compared to the others, but I'm here to make a case for him. Suna is 14 at the start of the series and is just thrust into this world of the mafia with the biggest responsibility put on him being the goal of becoming the boss. And not just any boss too, the boss of the most powerful mafia family in all of Italy. Many dislike that he doesn't want to be the boss, but I say he's well within his right. Yes, he does become powerful as the series goes on. Yes, he has a team already. Yes, he is capable. But the point is he doesn't want to right away. What makes Suna for me so relatable is that he's always willing to participate in anything involving the Mafia because he knows it's important for Reborn or because his friends are in danger if he doesn't. And he never strays from the fact that he wants to live his own life. He's a kid with wants and needs. He wants to just get with the girl that he likes, wants to just go to school with his friends and have a normal life. As much as people rag on him for being no good Suna, he still does enjoy the people around him and does enjoy the life that he has. Plus he's barely even a teenager who is just now having to deal with the death, the hurting of his loved ones, power, corruption, manipulation, and everything else that is revolved around the mafia. It's a lot for a kid his age and he pushes through all of it for the sake of his friends and family. That determination, that never give up attitude, that willing to die even if it means that everyone else is safe but still making sure that he comes out alive in order to have the life that he wants is why Suna not only fits his role perfectly as the main character but also as one of the best protagonists in my own opinion. There is so much I can talk about with this series. Its power system and how unique it is, the side characters and how each affect the plot moving forward, its villains and the way they interconnect with our characters, as well as the way the anime is versus how the manga is. There's so much I left out, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna leave it on this note. Understand that this video isn't here to change your opinion on the show. If you didn't enjoy it, that's fine. I understand that sometimes series just don't land for somebody. This video should be seen for those curious about this series as well as those who remember it from the past and wonder how it is now. Currently, all that we have of Reborn in the western side of the world is 16 volumes of the manga in English with the rest of the volumes stuck in Japanese as well as an anime with 203 episodes but does not cover the last two arcs of the manga. You can see why getting into the series is difficult especially recommending it to others. However, I at least hope my video piqued your interest enough to go and experience this series. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's the deepest writing with the most complex characters, but I feel if what you are looking for is a nice chill shonen with a great cast, simple plot, and plenty of action, I can't see you going wrong with this one. With that out of the way, I thank you all for watching. Be sure to follow me on my socials in the description. Let me know in the comments if this got you to Peep Reborn, or maybe you're a longtime fan looking for new videos on the subject. Wherever you are, everyone is welcome. Until next time, homies, peace out.